Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today we're going to be doing a little doodle in watercolors or a watercolor doodle if you'd prefer. And it's going to be a landscape and moreover it's going to be a sunset. That's what I hope. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to mix up some of my primary colors. That's Oriolin and for my blue this time I'm using a Cerulean blue and I'm using my uh, Vermilion uh, red. And Basically, it's going to be a simple wash coming down a very small piece of paper. And here we go. We're going to sort of lay in some of this lovely blue. Sorry, and it's just a lovely evening blue as much as a sky blue at any other time. But it does lend itself with mixes with the reds and the yellows uh, moving forward. Now, what you can see is that I'm allowing that bead to remain. And all the time that bead is fresh and I don't let it dry up, then I can add pigment after pigment after pigment and just keep that uh, wash coming all the way down the page to the bottom. And I'm going to add some vermilion now and get some of that going in there just to suggest the warmth at the lower part of the sky, much before it would hit the ground as it were. And it's just going to get rich. And we're not going to do too much more at this stage. A little bit of Indian yellow going in just to make it a little richer as we come on down. And I'm just going to let this glide down to the bottom and that's the pass done. That's it. That's all we need to do for this initial stage. But what I've got to consider now is to work out for the rest of it. And so once that's dried off a little bit I'm going to add in some of my violets. Now for this I'm using some uh, ultramarine blue and a little bit of Venetian red which gives that quite dirty uh, purple. It's not a pure purple, not as if it were a magenta or another red but it's quite dirty so to that end I'm going to be using that for the clouds up the top as they've closed in over the sky towards the end of the evening. This is the first pass, or not the first, first pass for the clouds, but not the first pass of the painting. This is the second pass to the painting. Now I build it up in layers and so the top is pretty much dry and so we are moving across the sky now with these lovely violets. They're soft, they're not heavy, they will become so later on, but for now they're just quite a gentle little mark. And I'm leaving some, what would have been white paper, but because we got the blue uh, colour of the sky underneath, so we're getting this lovely blue popping through those clouds as they not quite met up or not meeting up and blocking out the entire light. Just one or two um, darker areas just to go in there on the damp paper and let them find their own way in the painting. But look again, that bead is still there. I haven't allowed it to dry up and I can add to it and I've added in a little bit more of the reds and a little bit of um, some of the burnt sienna coming into that sky and that will get richer and warmer as it comes down to hit where the light sources are. Indeed now there's a little bit of the vermilion going in and a little bit more uh, purple going in so we've got a big mix going on with reds and the blues and as you can see it's quite dirty it's mixing with all the other colors but I'm still keeping the bead alive as you can see leaving little bits of paper to show the sky that's through the cloud coming through but essentially we're just building and building as we come down with this second pass but look all that bead is still active. The paint is still damp and I can still add into it and add the pigments without causing myself any issues further down the road. Now if you let any area dry up of course you're going to get a bleed back and this painting is being painted on an angle so it allows that paint to come slowly down the page. Adding a little bit more of the reds in and just wanted to take off. Didn't want that going down too much further so I've allowed that to dry off on the edge. In fact when I first put it on it was almost dry brush which um, it was a little bit too dry so, too dry, so I put some uh, more water into that mix. And I'm using some of those areas just to come across now. I'm being very careful because very easy to misjudge where you want to put pigment and once you put it in there if you're trying to preserve some of those really 
pale areas in the sky, it's very, very easy to misjudge it and lose them. A little bit of Indian yellow went across and now a little bit more of the blue violet going in. And that's chasing down that yellow mark that I put in as it hits that light source. So it almost disappears back into the yellow. But I've taken off the pressure from the yellow and corrupted it with the violet. But I'm putting a little bit of neat Indian yellow all the way through there just to strengthen it. And then a little bit of the red just to take out that harsh light in the background and make it more suggestive of the uh, all the various beautiful colors coming down. The it's really quite a rainbow effect. All these beautiful warms and cools working together or in some cases against each other, but to form that rich evening sky. And I'm mixing a little bit of uh, cerulean again now just to take out and add some of that coolness to the sky, which is just like a balance mechanism, really, because you've got all these warm areas, but you've got no cool areas. So that little bit of blue that's turning a little green with the yellows is a cool area and it's adding a little bit of balance to the whole picture on that side. So that's really important. Now what I'm doing now is I'm going to shake up and put a little um, little bit of um, what I call masking fluid with a pen uh, there. Now I found this afterwards to be a little aggressive. I think it actually damaged the paper. So it's something to be aware of. I have seen other people use a little sticky uh, price label, a little circle thing. And of course, if you don't want to do that, you can always use fluid straight from the jar and use a paintbrush to apply or something similar. But if you are using a paintbrush, then be aware, do not use a good one. It will invariably wreck your brush. And even though you are careful and wash it out, seldom does that always work. It's going to uh, mess the brush up. So use an old one. What I'm doing now is I'm simply adding some real rich warms at the base of the painting so that I can get it set up to put the silhouettes in once it's dry. It looks dark now, but it will dry a lot lighter, of course, as we well know. But the idea is that you can put some warm colors in, some nice violets, ultramarine, and some reds, and suggest really rich pigments coming in at the base. And that's how it would be, but all of it is enhancing the central uh, light show in the middle of the painting. And I'm sort of adding little bits each side just to hold the whole thing in as we move forward. So what I'm doing now is just adding in some of the richer tones in the sky. It's the sort of final pass really. We're going to give the weight to the clouds and we're going to add um, some strength to those because don't forget they are the ones that are closest to us and therefore they carry a much greater weight. But it does give me a uh, cause to darken the areas around that sunlight. Now this is the trick because the darker I make all of these areas around then the more intense the light will appear at the point of the sunset. And that's at the end what we're trying to do. We're trying to make the sun and those beautiful warm colors and the blues of the cerulean really pump out. So by making all these clouds a lot darker as they come around uh, and, and sort of seal it in, it's just so much better. I'm gonna really put a big blast of burgundy red and um, sienna in there just to really hit that as the sun is uh, going down and away and it's just revealing itself and leaving that beautiful red cloud uh, burning in the foreground as it were. So that's important. Now I'm just, while the paper's damp, I'm just adding one or two areas in, a little bit darker here and a little bit darker there. And I'm sort of just having fun with this because as I said, it is a doodle. It's an exercise. And the more of these we do, then the better it will be for us because we learn so much from doing this sort of thing. And you can learn so much from doing this as well because all you're doing is, is understanding the pigment. Every time you get the pigment out and you pay with, play with your watercolors, you're learning. It's a process. And the thing is that if you don't do it, if you're 
watercolor stay in the drawer or on the back seat of your car waiting for your next art class or whatever you're doing I don't mean that really to anybody but if you don't get them out and use the paper and I call it burning paper really I mean I don't mean go literally burn paper I'm just saying just get the paper and go through pads of watercolor paper do not have to be expensive processes a pad of watercolor just uh, costs a few pounds and if you go through that, the first few paintings you do may not amount to much. But you know, if, if you do a second pad, then one of those might have something about it that really is quite exciting. And if you do another pad after that, you may get another one, you may get two. But if you don't do any, then sure as eggs are eggs, you will not get any uh, paintings that, that will do very much for you. And at the end of the day, this is a learning curve. This whole thing about painting is, is about fun, it's about therapy, it's about understanding. It's, it's just enjoyable. And so this is why I'm doing this doodle. I had some time, as I said, and I just wanted to use that time just to paint and have some fun. And I thought if I'm doing that, I might as well turn the camera on and allow you to see it too. And it is in real time. It's not going to appear on my Patreon page. It will be purely for you guys on YouTube. And so to that end, you can stop this at any point you wish. I'll watch it all through. But when you've done that, get your watercolors out. Get a scrap piece of paper or your pad and tie it down to a board and have a go yourself. It doesn't hurt you and you're going to learn something. And hopefully by watching what I'm doing, you'll understand the processes that I've used to achieve this and you can try your hand at having a go at them yourself. Back to the plot, all I'm doing is just looking and reaffirming different colors and just interested in seeing what happens and there's a few low clouds on the horizon that are going to go uh, winding their way through the scene and giving a little bit of interest uh, down near where the sun is and you can see me putting that violet in. I'm going to push it right the way through the sun as well I think just to, not too much just enough in fact I drew the brush back and maybe uh, perhaps a little bit too much but it doesn't matter it's my picture and I'm having fun so you know do the same have fun and if it doesn't quite pan out how you want it's a small bit of paper it's 10-15 minutes of your time you can always do it again and have another go. But that's all it needed. It just needed a little bit of uh, area that's running through that sun area and making it quite rich and making them as drifting clouds uh, on the low horizon. And they're probably going to be the next ones that form up like the big one above and maybe drop some rain later, I don't know. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. What I'm mixing up now, though, is a quite a dark, a lot of um, dark paint going in in terms of uh, some sepia and some indigo. Touch of red to make it warm. And that's going to be my foreground. Now, I put the warm red in just to give that lovely, luscious red feeling at the point of where the sunset is at its brightest. But as I said earlier, the, the impact of that light is because I put everything around it that much darker. And indeed, this dark foreground, foliage, trees, part of the Romney Marsh, wherever, it doesn't matter really where it is. It could be a beach, it could be anywhere, it could be a city. But as long as these are really nice punchy darks, they will throw that sun and that light and make the picture come together. Before, it wasn't it was a collection of colors in certain ways and they look lovely and you can see those beautiful blues transcending through the violets the pinks the mauves the reds the yellows the oranges it's all there but without something to tie that to the ground to mother earth then it doesn't really mean an awful lot but this foreground however just makes the difference and you can see that light just forming through the center really rich and dark now to that end we're pretty much done so what i'm saying now is that have a go yourself get those paints out now you've watched this go back stop it start it and play around with it and enjoy your own version 
and always email me the results please do that would be fantastic i love to see uh, people who've watched my videos and i love to see the results of their endeavors and if you want to see more if you want to see more in depth paintings from me then nip over to my patreon page it's all there there's lots to offer enjoy that and uh if you like something that you see, then sign up to the Patreon, help support my channel, and in, in time that also helps me to um, bring more content, more quality content for you to enjoy both on Patreon and also on YouTube. So with that all said, I just want to wish you all a happy painting, and I'll catch you all very, very soon. All the best. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for watching everybody. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the like button and uh, add your comments. They'll be very welcome and always answered. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button now. And for your information, there's another video there and another video there. All the best. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Bye.